This time on Evidence Paranormal, the team returns to McPike Mansion in search of new findings. In a house full of moving shadows and strange sounds, they attempt again to reach out to those on the other side. But this time, will the spirits be friendly or something altogether different? In this line of work, places with evidence worth mentioning are hard to find, which is why groups tend to return to locations they know have paid off in the past. And the location we're once again returning to rests along the Missouri-Illinois border in a little town called Alton. And the building we're returning to is McPike Mansion. After arriving, we unloaded and began to set up our equipment as quickly as possible. Cameras first, then sensory devices, followed by a quick sweep to check for EMF. This time out, we were short one person, Jay, who had very important family matters to attend to. However, we increased our chances of not missing any occurrences in our environment by bringing along two more faces, my friends Tom and his daughter Jamie, both who have an interest in and have experienced the paranormal not long ago. Now we're recording. November. Making it the voice. As anyone would know, it's always important to direct each camera accordingly to capture any and all activity around our locations. With the paraspectral video camera recording in the outside hallway and the three remaining infrared and full spectrum camcorders being activated around us, it was soon time to start our investigation. <laughs> And after one last inspection, we were ready to go. Just then, out of the corner of my eye, something okay. happened. Unfortunately, the camera detected nothing. You just shine the light in there. Turn the light. I just saw some light moving around in there. Is there anybody here? Henry, are you here? We're 
here to say hi to you. Jenny? Paul, did you come home with us last time? Paul Lashinger was the previous owner of McPike Mansion during the 1930s and 40s. His name appeared on our obelisk at our house two weeks after our last investigation. Can you say the word placebo like you did before? A placebo can be something of no inherent benefit that is done or said simply to placate or reassure somebody. What time is that again? What time is it? What time is it? 6.56. Mm. I hope we're not interrupting your dinner this evening. When you're done, could you come down and talk with us? Of course, dinner probably should have never been mentioned. Go to point one again. Thank you. Oh, point two. Come on, do it. Point two. Come on. Touch it again. Make the numbers go up. Okay, maybe you don't want to. You're sticking at point one. Can you make one of those devices either speak or flash or make an alarm go off on it. Are you with us? Mary? Can you guys make the REM pod do the shave and a haircut? That was very clever last time. I tried to do that and I couldn't even do it. Can you do it for us tonight? Or at least dun dun dun? We all really got a kick out of it last time you did that. Can you make the REM pod go dun 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 dun? Or even just the two, dun dun. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> what was even more amazing was that after multiple tries by the spirit, eventually it began to get it right. Do you like Mozart? This was something that we could never be able to replicate physically, no matter how hard we tried. My name's Jamie. I'm new. I was wanting to speak with you tonight. You can show her by lighting this K2 up for us. Okay. Is Sarah here? Somebody's here. 
right down to a one. I'm also new. I like being in your wine cellar, but there's no wine here. What was your favorite wine? Henry, you could tell them about your grapes. How do you grew them yourself? What else did you grow, Henry? I like plants too. Are there any little ones with us tonight? Can you talk with us? Ooh. I just got a 2.8. My melmater may have just picked up her answer. Oh, wow. Don't be afraid. We're here just to talk with you. We definitely won't hurt you. over here by me, 52.2. No, it's 52.2. It just went up. It keeps fluctuating a lot. I closed that door out there to keep the air. Keep a little bit, what little heat there is in here. I feel a little colder than I should. from you. Can somebody please talk to us? We saw orbs. Was one of those you? Can you come in here and be with us? That could very well have been a spirit accepting her invitation. Instead of sitting and interacting, I felt it was time to get up and move around. Sometimes you get the feeling that something's around and you kind of want to help it along the way. Because they're from a different time, they may not understand what each of your devices are used for. See this device right here? If you touch it, it might speak. If you speak, it might translate. I'm going to turn my camera on. The round one behind it will definitely set off an alarm. That way we know you're talking to us. And sometimes you find a quick learner. Did you said something? Yes, you should. Please do. We'd like to hear more. This was just one of many words we were to collect throughout the night. Are you still with us? Can you say something else to us? What should should we do something? You gotta tell us, let us know. Because of the response we got on the obelisk, it was undeniable that we had something in the room with us. Little did we know. At that exact moment, something strange and incredible had just happened over Tom that no one was visibly aware of. Watch now from the IR corner camera's view as we move back the clock to moments before he turns with his millimeter.
This could not have been an insect because insects do not fly straight or glide, but instead they zigzag erratically. Their wings would have been seen fluttering, but not so here. Because of the turning motion of the melmater in Tom's hand, it was obvious this was not a reflection. Knowing no insects were present, it wasn't hard to figure out if this was of natural origin or a paranormal phenomenon. Some call them spirits, ghosts, even orbs. But whatever they are, we can debunk it as not being a bug or a reflection of light off the screen of Tom's melmater because of its turning motion. Therefore, whatever option remains just might be the truth. Did you grow vegetables here, Sarah? Did you cook them? Henry, what do you think of current politics? Can you keep track of it? This device down here again. This will speak for you. This one over here will set off an alarm so we know you're here. This is what you did last time. We can't even imitate that. I'm telling you. <laughs> and even if I tried, I'd have to touch it. Yeah. Which would set every alarm off. Last time I was only doing one light. And they went. Like Clara's belt, dun 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. The first time I did, I just did a dun dun. <laughs> it was funny. You guys are total, totally fascinating. Come on, you. We just want to know if you're really here right now. We have some people here who haven't met you. And we're just trying to get you to say hello to them. We're very interested. You know, Henry, my grandpa, my great great grandpa is on the other side with you. Have you ever talked with him? Is anybody here? Anybody at all? You can come forward, you can talk to us. We're here to speak to you. Well, nobody can come down here. You got a beeper trapped on the door. You don't have to be Henry. You could be somebody else that lived here. This is your home. We're your guest. You're supposed to entertain us. Give us, you know, make us feel like... We're welcome. Yeah. And if not, tell us that too. Yeah, if we bother you, tell us. In a polite way. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I have the device sitting on the floor over there. Where I'm pointing, which I'm sure you know. If you touch the antenna on that, an alarm will go off. Mm -hmm. Or if you 
just make it cold over there. Ready? On the count of three, try to let that, and see if you can let that one make a, make a sound. Ready? One, two, three. Bad enough that it's cold. Do you feel temperature or just batteries? Can't feel cold. They're just batteries. And energy. It's almost cold time for me. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Except I left mine out in the car. The increasing cold that Mary was experiencing could have been a spirit that was drawing energy from her to be able to interact with us. Nick Pike is Irish. Did you not have wine, but you drank beer, maybe? Sarah, we would sure like to see you dance. Could you come and dance for us? Because of an uneasy feeling I was experiencing near the doorway, I decided to walk out into the corridor and investigate an area that a century or so ago would have seen some heavy traffic and might still exhibit some echoes of the past in its dark, cold walls. It was my hopes that by continuously exploring the corridor, that whatever it was that I suspect it was watching us from the doorway, would descend into the wine cellar and talk with us. Anybody in here? Tap me on the shoulder. Just to tap me. What you gotta do 
for now. If there are more spirits watching from the doorway, hopefully they'll join us. Henry, are you here? Please. Jenny? Paul? Sarah? Anybody? Are you here? from out here actually. What's the other sound? Am I putting you on the spot? <laughs> oh, his eyes are red. Point <laughs> six. Any comments did from it? you guys? Point six. Mm -hmm. That's point zero again, but it did it for a second. Do you think we're funny? At that very moment, our laughter could have triggered a response from whatever was there. Fall festival time for you? Maybe you're on the river boats? Definitely made us all hungry that night. Oh god, yeah. Barbecue sounds great. With all this talk of food, now my stomach was starting to growl. It's not uncommon that when you ask questions of the spirits, that they don't answer you right away. You could sometimes get your responses half an hour, hours later. There it is. What is it? Placebo. Okay, why placebo? And in this situation, they answered my request. I asked Every it to say placebo. Here, placebo. What placebo? Is it a word that sounds like placebo and that's what comes across? Did you take a placebo, Henry, and not know it? These EM pumps that I got turned on, maybe that's what he's talking about. It's not actually giving them energy hmm. to manifest. This makes total sense and explains why Mary is a source for the spirits to draw from. stays at a constant 54 degrees in here, but... Mm -mm. No. Yeah, I've watched it go up and down three and four degree ranges. Can you see us? Or are we just energy to you? Just then, Jamie notices something in the hallway. Quite obvious it's got her a little freaked out.
It did? We may have another visitor. Can you see us? Or are we just energy to you? One person that can see something is Jamie. There's a shadow in your room. There's a shadow in your room. Unfortunately, the paraspectral camera picked up nothing. However, that didn't steal from the fact that it felt like something had just walked in the room with us. Are we energy or are we shadows to you as well? We don't clearly see you. We believe you're here. Did you hear that over here? Mm -hmm. Okay, was that shadow again? This time, it felt like we were being visited by more than one. You can come close to these devices. Are we too close to them? You don't understand what we are? That click sounds the infrared light. In this photo taken by Mary just then, there appears to be nothing there. Hold this. Keep taping where she's pointing. In an act to confuse and possibly attract whatever might be there, I begin walking around. Knowing that something probably followed me from the hallway to begin with, I'm hoping that I can walk back out there and this time catch it on camera. All I had done was walk into the next room and wait. I was trying to trick whatever was there to return to the doorway so that when I came back I could surprise it. But I think it surprised me most of all. Did you? I think I just did. <laughs> Look at the goosebumps. Come here. Wow. The temperature's up and dropping right now, too. See it? Chicken skin? <laughs> Big time. It's just sticking straight up. Apparently, the plan worked. As I was coming down the stairs, Mary snapped a photo, and in that photo to the left, you can see a shadow. In a photo she had taken moments before, the room appears very bright, but in the photo she took of me, there's a shadow. Could it be our visitor? I personally have no complaints. It did me no harm. Just then I realized I did need to get something from the upper level. But whatever was in the doorway, I don't think it had any intention of leaving just yet. I just find out for a room this size with no air movement, the temperature. Still got a one. Sounds like there's somebody standing there. I guess we could break. Are you cold? 
After an hour of recording, we took a break to collect video and audio data and replace used batteries. While Mary and I did so, Tom and his daughter Jamie stretched their legs and strolled the grounds and took some outdoor photos. And in that collection, they took several questionable images. In this photo, there appears to be a ball of bright light between the camera and the tree branch, and in the next one, it disappears. Afterwards, they approached some old wooden structures. In this picture of a stone block, they caught a shadow, a shadow that was not in the next photo. In an effort to debunk this, Jamie took a picture of her finger to see if it would cast a shadow, but it didn't. Were they being followed by whatever was in the basement with us, and were they able to take a picture of it? Once the files were collected and the batteries were replaced in all the cameras, we regrouped and began the investigation again. And not surprisingly, we found out we were not alone. Highway. You heard the highway from here? What did you mean by highway? Come over here and try to hold the device. Don't just touch it. Try to really grip it. Apparently, the spirits want to play a little paranormal hide-and-seek. Someone outside by the tree earlier. Hiding the stone. Can you smell cigar? Yes, I do. What I was unaware of as I was walking towards Mary was that my melmeter had went from zero to point two. Put that with a very faint smell of cigar, and we may have something here. Do you guys smell it? Mm-hmm. Maybe we brought in leaf smell from walking outside, maybe? Yeah, that's very possible. Were you walking in the middle of the yard? No, we stayed on the pass, but I just thought the wreck of angel. Well, they were, they were doing it all the way back in the middle. Maybe that smell's finally seeping in here. But it's still a cigar. It's, uh, and just as we were getting ready to dismiss the smell as not being paranormal. Back in June of 2013, on our second visit to McPike, we encountered a spirit who used the same word to communicate with us. Oh, did you see that? One, five. Oh, they're both doing they're it. They're all doing it. Two. Was that one? Yeah. Yeah. They're all, all three, three of them? At the same time. On the count of three. Light it up, please. Mommy? Mommy? It was our belief that this was a child spirit roaming the property. A child spirit that may have been mistaking Mary for its mommy. Stand up and take a look. You can see it. I'm recording it. Mm-hmm. Says mommy. Hi. Can you come over here and let me know you're here? Playing with the other kid in the yard tonight by the leaves. He was climbing trees. He was having fun. Were you out there playing with him? Were you by the rock? Did you put your hand in front of the camera? By the tree? It's okay. We just didn't know. And 
old are you? You play patty cake? Once again, the spirits were playing hard to get. stones in the yard by the trees earlier? I don't know your name. Can you say it in one of those devices on the stand? If you buy me, my temperature's falling a lot. You should you buy me in front of me? That was my cue to move in and video document what he was reading on his millimeter. Why the camera scare you? That's just Seeing if you're here. It was like 53, now it's 51.8 in the last two minutes, probably. 51.7. Are you here? Did you have balls or anything you played with? Yo yos, ropes? Apparently, they felt like giving us a cold shoulder for a while. Are you a boy or a girl? I got 53.8.5656. And the one over here is 51. This box I'm holding here. It's the same kind of wire you get, Dutch. Thought you know you're there. All you gotta do is get near it. See? He didn't even touch it. It's magical. My name's Tom. My daughter is next to me, and her name is Jamie. If you're a boy, light up the rim pack. If you're a girl, touch the K2, any K2 in the room. If you're a girl. The K2 is this device right here. That I'm holding up. I'll put that up here. With time wasting and nobody responding, it was time to up the voice level. Of anybody here, in spirit form, I really need you I really need you to react to us. Respond to our questions. Can you please do that? These devices can hear you, translate for you, set off alarms, they can light up. Numbers on these things can go up and down. You like birthdays? Did you get cake? And apparently, we were heard. Eleven three. Eleven three. Country sounded like. Country. They're saying almost the same things they said last time. Yeah. 
being louder proved to be more effective. Paul? Paul Lashinger, are you here? We need you down in the cellar. We need your help. Somebody fall asleep? Are you asking yeah. us what? Answer? Entire. Entire or tired? says it's asking entire. It's very possible that the ovulists mistranslated. Either it's the same person asking the same questions or giving us the same responses. And that the spirit said tired because both women were sleepy. Did you hear that? Heard something. We heard two crunching footsteps that was not caught on recording. This was definitely something worth looking into. Despite not being too scared, I'm still glad I used the porta potty earlier. And because I didn't see, hear, smell, or feel anything, I decided to return to the wine cellar. You know, I know you guys are more talkative than, than this. I've been here three times. This is the quietest you've ever been. Come on, give us a holler. You're gonna make us wait till the last hour? Ghost watch, we don't know when it's ghost 30. At this point, I decided to break out some unused toys. A laser grid. With this, if anything walks across the light, they'll break the beam and we'll see it. Okay, we got some Christmas lights up. If anybody wants to, uh, Walk across there, where we got the light shining on the wall. We would very much appreciate it. You all have come and gone before we even existed. How do we know that you, you even existed without you showing us something? Is something stopping you from communicating with us? Putting it down again. Talk to us.
Say something. If it wasn't for the new words that were coming through the obelisk all night, I would have taken the repeated words and just considered everything as residual. The reason we're here is because we're trying to find out if you can give us any information about what it's like on the other side. Tell us if you're happy. If life is the same. Do you get dressed? Do you still have meals? Do you live normal lives? Do you still have a cigar on that side? That was his stomach. That was your stomach? Yeah. Let's talk to his stomach. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Maybe we're, we're getting more answers from <laughs> started a new file. It did something to it. Do it. Carrier of what? Carrier, carrier, carrier. As soon as this camera shut, it, the screen went blank. And then a picture came back on and started recording again. Right after it did that, it said carrier. We got a battery over here on the floor with a red light that you can drain if you need to manifest yourself. Or if you need to juice yourself up. Scent. You sent me an answer? Is an S E N T? S E N T. I'd like to talk to my dad. Can you get it for me? Actually, we'd all like to talk to our fathers. They're over there. Funny guy. <laughs> I'd say. Muse? Muse? Yes. <laughs> Not a muse, muse. I know. Can you find Robert Watlow? Born in Alton, Illinois on February 22, 1918, he was most commonly known worldwide as the Alton Giant. Oldest of five children, Robert Pershing Wadlow was born to Addie Johnson and Harold Wadlow. His size was due to hyperplasia of his pituitary gland which results in abnormally high levels of human growth hormones. By the time he graduated high school, he was eight foot four. Later in life, while studying law, his size required him to use a leg brace. But at eight foot 11 inches, 439 pounds, it was a parasitic infection in his leg that eventually took his life at the young age of 22. Whoever can hear me, I have a specific question. Are fire demons real? Or did I imagine what I saw? 
A few months into 2013, Tom decided to remove a cabin on his property he felt was unsafe and collapsing in on itself. In his own words, let's hear what he did about it and what happened. Part of my curiosity for paranormals is something I experienced probably in January of 2013 where I burned an old flood damaged cabin down and uh, after a pretty sizable fire to burn the structure down, uh, it had collapsed, it was just a pile of ashes and maybe a door frame was left and out of that doorway I saw a miniature tornado the size of a human come out of the doorway spinning, move 10 yards out into the woods, stay in place, picking up leaves, lighting them on fire, grab a shovel to make sure it wasn't going to spread into a you know, bigger fire, and then the fire tornado, if you will, went 50 further yards and dissipated. Kind of stunned by what I saw, I kind of regrouped, and moments later another one came out, did almost the exact same thing, to a point where I remarked how many more of these demons will spirits will come out of here, and one more came out, almost followed the exact same path, and then went to the riverbank and dissipated. Without incident, without fire, it was just a self-contained little tornado of fire. I, I deemed it a fire demon, just because it was a ball of fire, but uh, I don't know what it was, that's why I asked the question. Definitely not a natural occurrence, and to happen more than once is certainly unusual. Bouncing to keep warm, so ignore For the remainder of the evening, interaction fell flat. Pictures were taken in hopes of finding more evidence, but nothing more was captured. We continued checking temperature and EMF readings, but that too offered up no noteworthy changes. But at least we had our stomachs to entertain us myself included. And despite the cold, we had a good time together, which is always as important as the investigation. And in some small way, I feel participating in this event with us gave a taste of the reality of just how quiet and boring investigating can actually be. But never take for granted, there are always dangers in this field. Spiritual as well as physical. Always have your defenses and know when to retreat should negativity introduce itself. Of the words spoken on the obelisk, this is the most we've ever collected in one evening. Despite the possibility they may be nothing more than residual, just the fact that we had more new than repeated makes me feel they were of an intelligence that was as curious of us as we were of them. And like the other investigations, we collected no EVPs. But whether you believe or not, we without a doubt collected several bits of evidence worth raising an eyebrow about. A few footsteps, shadows, and light anomalies included. But I promise you one thing, we're not giving up. Shutting down.